we already sustained a number of forces at short notice to move to respond to domestic and regional disasters if required to do so by the government. And at the end of this year, with successful certification of the amphibious ready element, that will be another force that is capable of responding to disasters in our region if required. The progressive capability will be expanded. It will be evolutionary and it will change the face of the Australian Defence Force in terms of its responsiveness and its capabilities in our region. Okay, the C-Series of exercises which involves uh, uh, other government agencies including Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and the AFP in support as well uh, is a series of exercises that takes the Joint Amphibious Task Force um, from a very low level uh, training scenario through to more complex amphibious operations. In a HADR, humanitarian aid, disaster relief and uh, evacuation operations in a permissive environment and some low level security tasks. The purpose of the exercise Joint Strike is to validate a joint force procedure within the amphibious task group. So today we've done a, a mortar practice, a naval gunfire practice, as well as coordinated close air support. The actual aim or the long term aim of exercise Joint Strike is for us to achieve full operational capability of FOC in 2017 and exercise Joint Strike is pretty much the first step in the road to achieving that goal. of an amphibious force, we have our medical resources based on a ship supporting our forces ashore. What we wanted to know is if someone ashore got injured that we could successfully go and get them by helicopter and bring them back to the ship, transit them through the ship and then get them into this resuscitation area so that we can actually save their life and get them to have their initial uh, surgery within two hours of injury. These young soldiers, some of them have been in the army for six months and some of them have been in the army for up to you know, 25 years and uh, not a lot of them have participated in these sort of activities before and so it's a learning experience for all. Uh, the capability itself brings flexibility because you don't have to rely on another country. We can uh, park the ship off the coast of the country and evacuate our own citizens, provide humanitarian aid or conduct security operations as required. We have embarked uh, Australian aid stores in several shipping containers, uh, some of which we'll be using uh, as part of the certification exercise so we've become familiar with it. We're also working very closely with DFAT in the planning and executing of these types of operations. This morning we're just going through doing kit checks, make sure all our gears are still functional and also basically running through uh, basic drills, make sure that everything's down pat and we know what we're doing and the gear's all squared and works as it's supposed to. HADR probably would more likely be in the event that uh, if we're going into any of the Pacific area uh, islands where there's a lot of explosive remnants of war left over, 
um, and we're called in to deal with something that may be close to a hospital or a school or some sort of a public area where it poses a significant threat to the civil populace and we can provide assistance. receiving Australian nationals and approved foreign nationals from ashore. Well, doing some security operations during the sea series is the precursor to identifying those things that we need to learn and do as we go forward into 2016. At the end of 2016, we aim to conduct a Sea Raider exercise which is deliberately focused on security assistance and stability operations in order to take that capability to the next level to set the conditions for the achievement of the full operating capability in 2017. Vibius Force has really shown its flexibility on this series of exercises. It is now in a position where it is another force that government can use to respond within our region. It is a game changer for the ADF.